Hi everybody, Jeff Kelly here. Uh, out of all the guns I own, there is none more fascinating than the Automag. The only one more fascinating than the original Automag is the North Hollywood Automag. And I put together a history uh, on it right here. And uh, I have a timeline at the end of this video on it, so I hope you enjoy it. First off, I wanted to mention Bruce Stark's uh, book, Automag, The Pasadena Days. Uh, it's a, really the definitive account of uh, the development of the Automag, and I encourage you to uh, get one. I will uh, put Bruce's email at the bottom so um, uh, you can contact him. Okay, so let's take a look at these Automags. This one here is a Pasadena and I wanted to show it to you to uh, before we get in uh, to the uh, North Hollywoods and uh, take a look at the grips there they're fully uh, checkered and I wanted to particularly show you the um, the sight on there it has that uh, red sticker in the sight notch that was cut for the Pasadena barrels. You can see that notch there. Now the uh, Pasadena guns came with these pieces of tape for the sight and you could cut it yourself uh, and put it in that notch. You could choose either the yellow or the or the red tape. Now the um, this one here is another Pasadena and this one is brand new. I was very lucky to get it and you can see that the um, notch does not have a piece of tape in it yet because nobody bothered to cut one and put it in there and uh, it's never been fired other than I guess at the factory but uh, that's how they used to come and you could cut your own tape and put it in there now this is the electro etching that they did and that was done by hooking a positive and a negative lead to the metal putting a stencil over it and then uh, painting it with acid and having the electric charge drag it into the metal and then reversing the charge and the electric charge would pull the acid out of the metal and it would come with that beautiful black uh, lettering which is uh, really nice. So there's the second Pasadena one. Now the uh, guns in Pasadena came with the case of course and the owner's manual and the bottle of two cycle castrol and um, the stainless steel allen wrenches with the automag logo there and it also came with the plastic hammer box the first ones came with black where the auto mag uh, engraving is there and then later on they just made them uh, without the black paint on them. The uh, North Hollywoods changed the owner's manual simply by stamping uh, some price increases in the back and uh, putting a new yellow sticker on the front with the TDE logo on it. Um, and then here is the North Hollywood. Now this one is brand new as well and I was really lucky to get this one. But you can see they changed the grips on it. The uh, complete checkering used to bother some people's hands so they uh, took part of the checkering off and put uh, these types of grips on it. 
you can see that beautiful electro etching in there with the North Hollywood, California. And then the new TDE logo with the spinning arrows instead of the uh, A inside the M, which looked like a uh, spider crawling down a uh, drain pipe there. Um, so let's take a look at the site. Bob Babashiewicz headspaced all these North Hollywood guns and he did the barrels on them as well. And he didn't think that it was necessary to put a notch on the barrel. So that was uh, one of the features that he eliminated. And you can uh, tell uh, if it's a North Hollywood barrel because it doesn't have the notch on it. But uh, uh, that's the uh, beautiful uh, North Hollywood gun that was... Uh, uh, made in Rosemead, which I will get into a little bit later. The serial number on this is AO1758, which is a Pasadena number, which I will get into a little later as well. Now, they were also making, with the North Hollywood guns, Bob was making his own uh, 357 um, AMP barrels, the automatic pistol barrels. And this is one of them here. I was lucky enough to borrow it from a friend. And the way you can tell that this is an original uh, Bob Ashiewicz barrel that was made in uh, Rosemead, uh, well, let me tell you why he was making his own barrels. Harry Sanford uh, had lost one of Bob's mills in the bankruptcy, and he felt bad about that. So he allowed Bob to make his own barrels so he could sell them along with the uh, North Hollywood guns. And um, so, but he wouldn't allow them uh, to put uh, any markings on them whatsoever. You can see the receiver there is just beautifully polished, but it has no markings or no markings on the other side. And you can tell a uh, Baba Shewitz barrel by that pin there in the uh, front sight. The front side is also set back, leaving a nice crown on the barrel. And then Bob liked uh, Mauser uh, sight shrouds or sight hoods. And he put in this uh, groove here that was uh, typical of a Mauser. And the groove was deeper in the center than it was on the sides to hold in the, uh, the shroud or the hood for the sight. And uh, it had the stainless steel Pasadena sight on it with the, um, with the grooves and the uh, uh, etch around the, uh, the sight notch there. has the uh, accelerator on it and then also um, the barrel screws into the receiver so if you look really closely you can see some threads in there but uh, these were just works of art and they're very very rare and very valuable so they were um, selling uh, both of these units together at uh, b and sales uh, if you wanted to buy the 357 barrel along with it. Uh, Bob also did not put the ventilated rib 
on his barrels either. They were just grooved that far down the receiver. So those are the differences between the Pasadenas and the North Hollywoods. The North Hollywoods were built with Pasadena parts. So that's why uh, they say that the Pasadenas are the most valuable because they were made of all the hard steel and the carpenter steel and the parts were all hand fitted and, and um, made very nicely. And the North Hollywoods were assembled from Pasadena parts. So this is why the North Hollywoods are the second most valuable. And um, I will get into the complete story coming up. The North Hollywood story starts with the Thomas Oil Company on Van Owen in North Hollywood. Uh, it was owned by uh, James C. Thomas III and they sold oil properties as a business. Uh, he was a friend of uh, Harry Sanford's. And in April of 1972, he bought $30,000 worth of uh, parts uh, and 250 frames for the automags um, from the factory in Pasadena with uh, the idea of eventually buying the company. On May 3rd, 1972, uh, the Automag Corporation in Pasadena filed for uh, bankruptcy. On July 7th, 1972, a notice was filed in the LA Times of the bankruptcy sale uh, for the Automag Corp in the 660 South Arroyo Parkway building on July 13th. The auctioneer, a Milton J. Worshow, wound up buying all the assets himself for $81,000, which included parts to build 3,000 automags. On August 2nd, 1972, Harry Sanford leased a new factory at 11685 McBean in uh, El Monte. And he hired three employees, Bob Bawashiewicz, Larry Grossman, and Ken Boyd, to work for him. But he didn't want to make uh, automags in that factory because uh, he didn't want the people that he owed automags to out of Pasadena coming down there and beating on his door and demanding their guns that they lost in the bankruptcy. There were still quite a few vendors out there that had been making parts for the Automag Corporation that still had parts on hand. And uh, Bob Babashiewicz and Ed O'Neill uh, went out to all these vendors uh, who had uh, bolts and unfinished frames, unfinished magazines, receivers, and um, also frames that Harry had uh, used for collateral on, on uh, other parts and bought them all back and eventually sold them back to Harry to start making automags again. On March 6, 1973, they had a hearing on the leftover assets of uh, the Automag Corp, which were the trademarks, the copyrights, and the patents. James C. Thomas III and Mark Lovendale were the only two bidders on those assets, and uh, James C. Thomas won the bid with a $4,000 bid and uh, another $29,000 owed to the creditors on the uh, first thousand guns that were produced. So now James C. Thomas III has won the rights to the automatic name, trademarks, intellectual property. He has purchased the $81,000 worth of machinery that came out of the automag factory in Pasadena 
from the auctioneer and the rights to uh, build 3,000 guns that came along with that. He's got the 250 frames uh, that he uh, uh, purchased for the uh, $30,000 that uh, he spent back in April of 72. And Harry has got the factory leased in El Monte. Mr. Thomas has hired Harry to run the whole operation. And now we're at the point where James C. Thomas III is going to form TDE Corporation or Trade Deed Estates and uh, use the address of his Thomas Oil Company on Van Owen in North Hollywood for that DBA. So the North Hollywood guns are about to be made. It's back to Rosemead and Bob Bawashiwit's house. Harry didn't want the automags to be made at the Almani factory because of the people that he had um, stiffed in the bankruptcy. So he set Bob and Larry up with equipment at Bob's house to make the North Hollywood automags there. You're looking at an aerial view of Bob's house in Rosemead. The backyard where the uh, shade trees are, where, where the barrels were head spaced, and uh, the garage is where the frames were put together for the North Hollywood auto mags. And they made about a thousand of them in the uh, backyard of a house in Rosemead. Uh, James C. Thomas III was good friends with the Kahn brothers, Bob and Barry Kahn, that owned B&B &B Sales. That's a picture of Bob Kahn right there with the two ARs. And they struck a deal to market the North Hollywood auto mags, along with uh, Bob Babashiewicz's 357 Magnum uh, highly polished barrels that did not have the automag name Electro etched on them because of liability reasons to TDE, but they were all marketed together. You could either buy that separately or buy them as a package, uh, but they were located in North Hollywood and they were the ones who sold the uh, North Hollywood guns. Now here's an old ad I found with the uh, address for B&B &B sales back in July of 1974, but I understand that they originally started out in an apartment on Riverside Drive and rented the apartment next door, knocked the wall out between them, and set up a gun shop until the landlord kicked them out. Um, so here's a, a picture of the Cumston address. Uh, the building is no longer there, but uh, that's what's left. B&B uh, &B Sales later moved to uh, an Oxnard Street address uh, where they became the largest gun shop in Southern California and um, up until 2000 and then went out of business because of personal problems and other things. But uh, uh, they became highly successful. The North Hollywood guns came with a uh, uh, special owner's manual that was identical to the Pasadena owner's manual except it came with the yellow TDE sticker on the cover and there were some price changes that you can see there that uh, they didn't want to print up a whole new uh, manual to uh, illustrate the new prices. Walter Sanford made a notation on the original serial number list that number 38 75 was the first North Hollywood gun. My uh, North Hollywood automag there, the uh, 1758, uh, listed 
uh, in the Pasadena serial number uh, log. These are all Pasadena serial numbers, by the way. And then um, I've re researched on the internet all the Hollywood automags that have been sold that I can find. And all of those numbers in red with uh, the dates by them are Pasadena numbers, yet they are North Hollywood automags. And those were a result of Harry giving uh, guns without bolts or without receivers or frames or whatever to people that he was getting loans from. And then those are the ones that uh, these guys bought back and then reissued as North Hollywood guns, but with Pasadena numbers. I think it's really telling uh, how many January uh, 72 numbers there are there. Uh, you could probably infer that uh, that was a time where he grabbed up a bunch of frames and handed them to a guy for a $15,000 loan. But that's how the uh, North Hollywood guns get sometimes those uh, very low serial numbers. Uh, this is a uh, letter and a picture of a North Hollywood gun that a friend of mine, uh, Larry Allen, sent me. Uh, his father uh, used to be a auto mag dealer and at one time had over 300 auto mags in the Midwest. Uh, if you notice the picture of the uh, auto mag that uh, is in the case, it has a very dark frame. And evidently there was three frame makers that were making frames for these back in uh, the 70s and one of them used graphite to release the frame from the mold uh, which gave it that dark color and most of those frames were rejected for the Pasadena guns but when they uh, bought all the parts back uh, and the collateral parts a lot of those frames were in there as well and uh, they made uh, North Hollywood guns with them so occasionally you will find a North Hollywood gun uh, with that dark frame on it. Uh, this one happens to be pretty close to the time where they regained the rights to the automatic name on March 6, 1973. This one is uh, dated March 26, 1973. So it's a pretty early uh, early automatic. So after the North Hollywood chapter was closed uh, in the auto mag story, uh, James Thomas closed the building he had in uh, North Hollywood and moved everything down to El Monte, where it was just uh, TDE Incorporated, and uh, the El Monte guns were born. After watching a few videos on uh, YouTube, there seems to be a misconception on where some of these guns were made. Uh, a lot of the time, they think they were all made at different places. And this is a list of where they were made. And you can see that uh, uh, Pasadena and then, of course, the Rosemead. But uh, the uh, Almani guns, the High Standard guns, Lee Juris guns, uh, Kent Lamont guns. And the OMCs were all made in El Monte at this uh, factory right here. So most of them uh, came out of the same place. I also wanted to post a written timeline for you on uh, everything that was discussed so it would uh, be easier to get straight. I know the, comp the uh, story is pretty complicated, but... Uh, here it is, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and will like it, and share it, and uh, subscribe. So thanks very much, and I will see you on the next one.